Welcome to my vlog on the coaching process. So to kick us off on the coaching process, it is described by Cush in 2007 as a, dyna a dynamic social activity that engages both the coach and the athlete. Um, so it's important to actually note that and currently there's actually no accepted model for practitioners to refer to. Um, and this just highlights <clears throat> the complex nature of, of the process. Um, so we'll give an overview of uh, this vlog. Um, so basically what we're going to do is look at a coaching session um, between myself and one athlete. Um, we're going <clears> to <throat> observe my behaviour um, and see what changes I would make to, to that. Um, discuss how my coaching relates to literature. Um, so how does the literature um, tie into my process as a coach um, and how I can make improvements based on my behaviour in a session. So the athlete I'm working with is a novice sprinter. We will observe myself and the athlete participate in a conditioning session incorporating drills for max velocity running. Here uh, we're going to do a session today based on max velocity sprinting. Okay, so what we're going to do is a quick warm up, a uh, lap around the track. We'll get you warmed up with some drills, um, some dynamic stretching. Okay, and then we're going to get involved in the actual session itself. There's going to be drills for max velocity sprinting. Okay, so looking at key positions you want to be hitting that we want to see in max velocity sprinting. Before we start, how's the hamstring? It's good, yeah. 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 And the calves, because I know you did your sprints, I know you did your session on Monday in your spikes. Your calves are okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, like if there's any problems halfway through the session or at any yeah. point in the session, just let me know and we'll, uh, we'll see what we'll do, okay? So here I'm just giving a brief overview of the session. Um, I always like to explain the focus of the session um, to the athlete um, before he starts um, so he feels more engaged in the process and he understands what we're trying to achieve as opposed to just instructing the athlete uh, what to do right from the get-go. And, you know, I feel it's important the athlete knows my decision with his training hasn't just been picked out of thin air. Um, they're more likely to appreciate the attention to detail that you've put in and... Um, they'll buy into the process a bit more. We start the warm up with a lap of the track followed by dynamic drills. Throughout these stretches, I am mostly letting him get on with it. Um, with not that much input from myself. Uh, I offer some guidance on some positions that I see aren't executed properly, but generally uh, myself and the athlete are confident that he can get on with the warm up himself. Um, <clears throat> And this is just like one part of my coaching style. So I opt for a guided discovery method in some aspects of training um, where I feel the athlete is more skilled and confident. Because the athlete is unfamiliar with these drills, I decided to take a command style approach um, during the main body of the session, um, giving instructions on various drills. I value the importance of providing quality demonstrations to aid the athlete's learning. You can see I make sure the athlete can see me from a side on view. And this is also combined with verbal cues that I try to make as simple as possible for the athlete. Um, unfortunately, the sound isn't available here, but I'm directing the athlete's attention to striking the ground hard and bringing his heel to his hamstring. So those are just two cues I used um, in that particular drill. Um, I try to focus on just a maximum of two cues per skill because um, <clears throat> any more than that will uh, hinder his learning process. I think two is enough for him, um, for any athlete to be getting on with when they're learning a new skill. As you start to lengthen, as you start to lengthen out, let's Let's not forget about butt kick. And what butt kick is going to do as you pop, and butt, butt kick pop tie, is what that is for is to, is to get the knee height. And what's happening with you 
is when you get up to top speed, the, the knee height is just isn't there. It's just too low. So let's remember those uh, those drills from before. Because what, what happened before in those drills was the knees were getting nice and high. Yeah. But that's not that's not uh, it's not happening in the in not transferring over. Yeah. So you need to really think about And Dave, yeah. that also that also means keeping high on the hips. Okay? That, so what I mean by that is that you're not sinking. So fast sprinters keep a nice high hips. They're they're um, it's like a string is in their head and it's pulling them up towards the sky. Okay? Let's start this uh, with straight legs. Because yeah. remember, we're still in a drill session. We're not doing an actual sprint session. So if this is technically still a drill, but the main focus really is getting up to top speed at the end. Yeah. All right, that's what we want. But let's start it with straight legs, just to reinforce that, um, how much time you spend on the ground. Let's really get that foot off the ground. Start off small and then bigger. Start, start off small, bigger, but then really let's letter it into top speed running, as you would in a race. Okay? Okay, so those clips that we just looked at are some examples of, of the behaviour that I would change. I'm spending too much time delivering the cues and feedback, basically. Um, I'm clearly thinking too much about what I want to say. And this takes away from the quality of the coaching and learning process, I think. Um, Jan's 2009 argues the importance of keeping the experience short and simple in delivering cues. Um, further to that, there's evidence from Schmidt and Lee, 1999. Um, they state that a heavy stream of feedback actually forces the athlete to become over-reliant on, on feedback. Um, <coughs> And this in turn hinders the learning process. So um, instead, um, it's probably more beneficial to give athletes more opportunities to self-correct. Drills were good. Um, I think we really emphasized uh, getting off the ground quickly, but also extension. So flexion is when you get off the ground, all right? And then the extension is using that height to pound the ground. Yeah. and fast to get that flexion and to get that high knee recovery we need that um, we need that heel to hit the hamstring and to bring the knee up don't need to think about it too much um, and certainly I think when you start going into sessions again I wouldn't think about all the drills that we did today and try try to run a certain way I think just run normally but we need to focus on uh, getting these types of drill sessions in regularly so that this will just transfer into your running over time. Finish the session with a debrief. This is an important step as it allows the coach and athlete to evaluate the session. On reflection, I would have asked the athlete questions to encourage more engagement. Um, you know, with this being his first session practicing sprint drills, it's likely that he isn't that, all that confident. Um, so it's probably... Uh, I think opening up a two-way conversation will allow us to identify movements he's he's having trouble with and that will uh, hopefully allow us to plan for the next session so definitely questioning is something I need to make more use of. Reflecting on my coaching process I feel I'm in a better position now to develop on my coaching philosophy. Um, the athlete's safety is paramount to the process as clearly identified at the start um and that should you know it should be at the forefront of, of most coaches minds really there's no point in carrying out the session if it's uh if there's a likelihood that the athlete will get injured or he clearly isn't uh isn't skilled enough to perform a certain task um, engaging the athlete in the process creates a stronger coaching and learning experience um and finally, based on the changes that I have realised I need to make in my cueing and my feedback, I feel that being flexible and adaptable in my approach is fundamental for a stronger coaching process.